Welcome to the featured guest segment on today's Smart Chiropractor Show. Jason and I had the opportunity to sit down with Dr. Rebecca Hopkins of the Wellness Studio a few weeks ago. You might know her as the chiropractic guru on Instagram. She has a passion to help others thrive, and that's what led her to become a chiropractor. She believes in a holistic and multidisciplinary approach to patient care, and she's done a fantastic job building 20,000 plus followers on Instagram that has helped her build her practice. So today's interview is with Dr. Rebecca Hopkins, how to generate thousands of Instagram followers with the chiropractic guru. Hey, smart chiropractors. Welcome to Smart Chiropractor Show. In today's featured guest segment, I'm Dr. Jeff Langmaid here with my co-host, Dr. Jason Deitch. And today we have an opportunity to sit down with somebody that I've messaged on Instagram many, many moons ago, the chiropractic guru, Dr. Rebecca. Thank you for taking some time and chatting with us today. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure. And I want to kick it off right there. You are a big time power user on the Instagram platform. What got you started? When did you start with it? How did that begin for you? Yes, that's a loaded question. But um, it all started about three years ago when I actually moved to Texas. I'm originally from Ottawa, Canada. And so moving here was a big, big adventure, big step in my career, but also in my life. Um, and it all kind of started in STEM because I didn't know anybody here and I knew I was going to be starting my professional career here in Texas. So naturally being from Ottawa, I you know, originally thought I was going to be practicing there. So, you know, I thought it would be an easy transition. Uh, our family owns a restaurant also where I'm from. So pretty well known in the community. And I thought, okay, perfect. We're set. Like I'll open up a practice. I'll be good to go. Well, that wasn't the plan. <laughs> Everything kind of shifted and pivoted. So I uh, moved to Fort Worth, Texas, and I was like, well, no one knows Dr. Rebecca out here. How am I going to get <laughs> my name out there and get people to know me and what I do and how I can help? So I started the Chiropractic Guru from scratch, zero followers. I did have a personal page, but I decided I wanted to just dive right in and just see what I can do with it. And that's what I did. So in 2018, Towards the end of 2018, I started the page. And honestly, at the beginning, it was just to share the profession, share the knowledge that I had. I was fresh out of school and very excited and um, just really determined to promote value in education and the chiropractic profession and how it can help everybody. So I was just there, didn't know what I was doing, <laughs> posting here and there. And I really, honestly, everything changed when I took it seriously. And I sat down and said, you know what, I really need to, eventually I'm going to be practicing and I really need to get my name out there and get people to know me. So I took it serious and just decided to go from there, learning along the way, different tactics, different strategies, how to grow, um, how to create engagement on my platform. And it kind of all just stemmed from there. And now I'm at over 20,000 followers. So it's been awesome. That is awesome and remarkable that you started from scratch. Um, Dr. Rebecca, I'd love if you wouldn't mind just sort of sharing with other Kairos about your journey. Uh, I'm assuming you didn't have 20,000 followers the first week, the first month, you know. So uh, help chiropractors understand what, what should they expect? I mean, this is a long game. You've been, you said you started in 2018, we're in 2022. Um, what, what, is, what should somebody expect as as far as a process and a journey and, and what does taking it seriously mean exactly? So they can know, you know, oh, I'm dabbling versus I'm focused on getting results. Right. I think everything changed when I decided to use my platform to grow my practice and grow my business. So that's when I kind of treated it like, you know, a business, like I put it into my schedule, like as if it was part of my day and a part of the tasks that I had to do. So, um, I basically, it took me about three years to grow to 20,000 followers. So it took me quite a long time to figure it out. But once I did figure it out, um, I was able just to keep going from there and going from there. And so much so I created a blueprint that now I teach other doctors how to do the same. Um, what's great about it is that, you know, for me, it was all trial and error. So it took me three years to do it. Um, but the doctors that I teach, you know, the whole goal is to teach them all the tips and strategies and the errors that I did and, and had to go through for that time span to be much shorter um, so that they can use their platform to grow. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, it's just being consistent, showing up for your audience, um, treating it like, like a job and treating it like it's a part of your business because it is, it's a, it's a marketing tool. Um, and just realizing that today in today's age, uh, Instagram is definitely something that needs to be, um, or social media in general needs to be a part of your marketing plan. Um, because believe it or not, everybody is going to Instagram or TikTok or whatnot to find their healthcare professionals, their makeup artists, their, you name it, everyone is on there to find something. So being on there is so crucial and so important. Yeah. I could not agree more. One of the things that comes to mind for me following your, you know, your page for a while is you really, you know, encapsulate a lot of what Jason and I talk about, which is teach and invite consistently. You're great with consistently consistency. You lead with education. What's your take on that balance between, you know, calls to action and promotion versus education? How do you think about that today? And as to, as we get into 2022, because things always evolve, that balance between education and promotion. Yeah, so I like to think of my Instagram page as a page where people can come get to know me and, and get to know what I do. I know that a lot of people struggle with selling on social media and I don't necessarily create my content to where you feel like you're being sold to. It's more so sharing the journey, sharing um, experiences, sharing how you can help and add value to the audience. And through that, you sell um, naturally. So I think that we are all being sold everywhere else we go. You, you know, you, you turn on the TV, radio, um, the internet in general, we're being sold left and right. And I think that for social media, it's the last place that people want to be sold to as well. So just determining different techniques, um, that you're not necessarily selling, but you are getting people to, I like to call it the know, like, and trust factor. So people to get to know you, like you, and trust you. Um, and then in turn, really interested in what you have to do, what you have to say, and, and, you know, you're, offers and services and things like that. So I don't necessarily use um, like hard sales on my platform uh, in general. Uh, and that's probably why you have so many followers, obviously. <laughs> um, so uh, on the other side of the pendulum for all of that, I'm sure a lot of chiropractors are wondering, uh, you know, is it worth my time? You know, should I be blocking out time every day like you're suggesting? What can you tell chiropractors in terms of expectations uh, regarding outcomes? Do you uh, receive patients exclusively from Instagram and then referrals and people that learn through there? Do you do other marketing? Is this really your major form of attracting new patients? And uh, are you able to generate revenue beyond just chiropractic services by having your following? H how should chiropractors think about what kind of outcomes they can expect over what kind of time periods? Yeah, that's a great question. I think just really sitting down and figuring out what you, you have to enjoy it. I, I wouldn't say that doing it and forcing yourself to do it would necessarily help you and be beneficial. You have to enjoy it. Um, you have to want to put in the work and the effort. I will say this, you have to be in it for the long run. It's not an overnight thing. Um, it takes time to build and to grow. But honestly, I think it's the best decision I've ever made because I don't pay for marketing, Google ads. Instagram is my main um, referral source. So for me, it's everything. So I put everything into it and I receive everything in return. So it just depends on what you're looking for, what you want in return. But putting in the work and taking the time and blocking out your schedule and doing that stuff it really, you will really reap the benefits. So really focusing on that, I think is, is very beneficial, especially these days. And I always tell doctors, why wouldn't you be on social media? It's completely free. And so you're, you're creating lifelong patients from the platform um, in an organic way for free. So I think the return on investment is, is great. <laughs> We could not agree more. <laughs> I definitely agree with you. How much, if you look at your, your Instagram account and you were to say, you know, there's the public facing, your posts and your stories, and obviously then there's the backside, which is the direct messages, et cetera. 
if you just had to rough estimate, are you spending a lot of time, in, you know, in direct messaging, you, you know, either proactively or just addressing questions? Is most of your time spent on the content side, on the publicly facing? How how does that balance out? I know it can probably vary, but you know, if you just had to say week to week, what does that look like for you? Yeah, I would say that. Of course, I get the messages. Um, I don't say I spend too much time in the DMs. Um, a lot of I think a lot of people would assume that I would. I mean, questions here and there for sure. Um, but I think that a lot of people assume that I'm in the DMs probably a lot. A lot of my sales don't happen through DMs, so I'm not there a lot. And then a lot of the questions that I get um, are through um, just uh, comments and things like that. So not a whole lot of time on DMs. Where I do see a lot of traffic is the link in my bios and getting people to schedule um, straight from there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I, I spend way more time focusing on content mm -hmm. and really valuing that and making sure that I'm getting my message across. I always like to think about it um, when you do have a plan in, in mind, a marketing plan, that I'm always trying to speak to my ideal patient that I want to see. Who is that person that I want to serve and who am I talking to? So when I create content, it's that's my focus. I'm creating it around them and trying to solve their problems and their pain points. Yeah. So I would say content for sure. And I think that's time well spent for anyone trying to grow. Their platform is on the content because if you're not posting anything, you're not on your stories, you're not interacting and, and creating engagement, then you may be an expert in chiropractic, but no one knows because you're not sharing anything. Uh, you are singing from our song sheet. We feel the exact same way about all of these things. Um, Rebecca, what can you tell us about your team and your resources? And, uh, you know, do you do this by yourself or obviously you're not taking, those are not selfie pictures. So you have somebody talented, at least on your team. Um, <laughs> what, what does it take for a chiropractor to be able to do this? Yeah, honestly, just yourself. I'm a pretty much a one man show. I do have my husband and um, a photographer that helps me. Um, but pretty much a one man show, you don't need much. As long as you have a good phone uh, that has a, a camera and video that can take videos, that's all you need. Honestly, to this day, I still use my phone to record. Um, I may take my professional pictures here and there um, that help out a lot just to those posts I use mainly to uh, more personal posts. Um, that I share into my life and things like that. But the content that I share for patients, for potential patients, is is on my phone. So you don't need much. You don't need to spend much. You can do it right now, right where you are, and be successful. That is great, great information. And uh, I think a lot of docs get that paralysis because I don't have the right insert whatever here. And it's, it's great to hear from somebody who has been exceptionally successful on the platform. It's just not true. You know, smashing, smashing those belief patterns. Let me ask you a question about stories versus feed. Are you doing more posts, more stories? Do you, you, do you make a post and then reference it in a story? How do you think about utilizing the different pieces within Instagram's architecture? Yeah, I use my feed as sharing valuable information. So anything that I want to address for, you know, for example, for me, I, I do a lot of the mobility stretches exercises. So those types of things I usually use my feed for. When it comes to stories, I like to think about it as I always tell my clients, it's like your own little Netflix series. So it's one of those tools. And I love that about Instagram that you can jump on and really show people behind the scenes of your office behind the scenes of your life, like get people in who, who Rebecca is. Like I want people to, and we go back to the know, like, and trust factor. And I think stories does a really good job with that. You there's the story really portrays who you are and what you're about, your personality, um, you know, your heart, your motives, um, all of that. So I think that it really paints a great picture and kind of shows little ins and outs of your life and you can use it as a way to show people what your office looks like because I've noticed that um, when I show like my treatments that I do or what my office looks like it's a familiar space for people who haven't been in your office yet to be like wow okay I know what it looks like I know her face I've seen her talk so when they come into my office they're pretty much and I've, I've heard this time and time again I feel like I know you 
I feel like coming to see you was super easy because I've been following you and um, I know you and it was comfortable and it was, it was really easy. I know we've had all had those situations where we may have been to a doctor's office or any professional and not felt that comfortable. Um, and so I think Instagram does a great job and the stories do a great job at um, really like making people feel comfortable before they step into your office and, and showing them who you are and having fun with it too. I think it's a great tool just to kind of have fun and be yourself. Yeah. Well, uh, you're the one doing the great job. And, and to that point, uh, you can't just sign up an accountant. It's, it isn't up to them doing it. It is up to you doing it. And that's right. what I'd love to learn more about, which is how do you come up with what, what you should talk about? Uh, you know, the, the intuitive, perhaps counterintuitive uh, sense is chiropractors think that they always got to be selling chiropractic uh, and they'll never get a second chance to, you know, say something later about chiropractic that they should have said now immediately. I look at your feed and you're recommending some of your favorite products and sometimes, you know, you're stretching uh, in others, you know, there's just pictures of you saying, have a great day. How do you... How do you sort of choose what you're going to talk about and, and really find that balance of not overselling things? How, how do you pick your topics? Do you do, do you do it in advance? Is it year by year, month by month, week by week? How do you think about putting together what you're going to talk about? Yeah, I think that's, that's a great question. I think the first step is really figuring out who you're trying to talk to. Because if you don't know who you're talking to, it's going to be very hard to create content and come up with ideas. So figuring out your ideal patient and what I tell my clients is sometimes they're students or they're, um, they're still, you know, of course still in school or they're new grads um, and they haven't really had much experience and they, and they usually tell me like, what does that even mean? What is my ideal client? What is my ideal patient? Um, I don't know. So there's two ways you can do that to really figure out who you're trying to talk to. First way is let's say you've been treating patients. Um, I basically tell my clients to think of that patient that you love seeing in your office. You just absolutely love treating. Um, you know, they light up your day when, when they come in. That's probably going to be someone that you want in your office over and over and over again. Um, and the second way, if you don't have any experience in chiropractic as far as treating goes, you can create a patient avatar. So make someone up, someone that you would love to treat. And we do that often, actually, and, and it works really, really well. But once you have that person in mind, now you're set up to where you know what content to create for that person. We want to find the person that we're trying to talk to and then create content to speak to them and to help them and improve their quality of life. So the way I do that and coming back to how do I know what to post, I create and sit down and plan out what's called uh, your three content pillars. So three to five content pillars is what I go by. Um, I've stick to three and I actually have an exercise, a freebie on my, um, on my Instagram that you can go to right away and really start figuring that out. Um, so three things that you're super passionate about and a way to balance chiropractic and other things is to pick three topics that you're passionate about. Doesn't have to, all three don't have to be about chiropractic in your profession. It could be women empowerment, motivation, inspiration. Um, the other one can be chiropractic related stuff. So you want to talk about, you know, for me, for example, it's mobility and exercise. Like I try to have people go to my page, look at my video and say, okay, I'm going to try these right away. It's very actionable. They can do it right away from home and uh, relieve some of the pain and tension that they have. So it could be really broad. It could be very specific if you wanted to. And then the third thing could be basically your personal life. So you want to share more about your family, um, you know, um, your wedding, anything personal you can share about. So knowing those three content pillars and rotating between them, you can devote two or three posts to one of them, however you want to split it up. I usually go, um, you know, chiropractic motivation and then personal chiropractic motivation, personal. So it's not so overwhelming to the audience and it's all about chiropractic. It doesn't necessarily have to be all about chiropractic. So that's my style. But I know a lot of people, for example, realtors, um, they don't have much personal stuff in there. They're just posting about homes and anything to do with realty. So it really depends on how you want to portray your content and, and push it out there. Yeah. That's what I would say. That's great. Great advice, great tips, and a great strategic approach. I love it. 
how do you protect your mindset? You know, getting up every day, being publicly facing isn't easy in the best of circumstances, you know, and being out there, the bigger your audience grows, you know, you can, there's always, the, you know, the haters, there's always the who's paying attention. As you have build and grow and develop your own following, do you have any you know, mindset tips for docs, favorite books? Do you meditate every day? What, what sort of keeps you motivated to have that consistency, which we always say consistency is the number one predictor of success when marketing and in many things in life. However, so many of us in so many ways you know, struggle with it day in and day out, especially docs when we talk about building and growing their practice. How do you think about mindset and perhaps what's a practice or two that you found to be super helpful to reach your level of success? Yeah, I think it can be very overwhelming, especially social media. It can feel like it's consuming most of your day, but you have to protect your mind and your mindset. Um, it's it's what allows you to show up as you and, and be authentic and, and real and just enjoy it. When it comes to a point where you're exhausted and you don't enjoy it anymore, it's not really benefiting you. So um, different practices that I do, I just go to what I love to do, and that's exercising um, and I love reading. I've really been into trying to read one book a month. So just setting aside time to do that and to just like, I've been guilty of being on it too much. And my husband have to say, hello, can you come back to earth? Like, you know, so because it's a part of my business, it's hard to separate, you know, that from like your personal. So I would say, go back to things you love doing, whether that's, you know, exercise, reading a book, meditation, um, really anything like going shopping therapy, mm -hmm. um, anything like that. But I think one thing that's really helped me and I've uh, learned this from someone else is to treat it like it's a part of your business. So for example, anything that you want to do with social media, put a time cap on it, block it into your schedule and devote, let's say two hours to do all the things you want to do for your social media platform. And then um, basically blocking that out and anything over two hours, don't do. Just stick to two. Yep. Yep. You got to set those boundaries. Uh, Rebecca, you have been fantastic. I love the strategies, the tips. I'm going to encourage everybody out there. Instagram, the chiropractic guru. Be sure to check out her Instagram blueprint as well. Thank you so much for coming on. We will drop those links down below. We appreciate you coming on and sharing and uh, keep up the incredible work. Uh, Docs, make sure at the bare minimum, you want to head over and follow her and see what she's up to. And I'd encourage you to pick up that Instagram blueprint. Thank you. Great interview with the chiropractic guru, Dr. Rebecca Hopkins. One thing I want to touch on there that she brought up, and I think it's incredibly important, is understanding who your ideal patient is. Uh, Jason, I know you and I spoke with the doc eh, probably a year ago now, and uh, she, uh, she refused to concede <laughs> that she had an ideal. Everybody with the spine, uh, and there, there's, there, there's right and wrong, and there's not too many things that are wrong, and I'm just going to go on record, that's wrong. Uh, at the, you can get away with that, perhaps, from a certain amount of time. You're super charismatic. You have the right relationships in your community. However, inevitably, that is going to stunt your growth, and it certainly is going to stunt your ability to go deep. And I think no matter who you are out there, there are certain types of patients that you resonate with that you get fired up when you see them in practice. And quite frankly, it can't be everybody. So what are those people? What are the characteristics? Maybe it's psychographics. Maybe it's demographics. Maybe it's what they're into for hobbies. It could be a variety of different things that make up your ideal patient population. My transition point here, my pivot is think about them when you're creating content. For example, all of my branding is always focused upon other chiropractors. You can clearly see that I do not have a B2C, a business to consumer brand. It is really focused on attracting the interest and attention of you, a chiropractor out there listening and watching. And you can do and you should do, and I'd encourage you to do the same for your practice. As you are building and creating content, how can you fine tune the content? If we're providing that and you're a member of the Smart Chiropractor, great, when you're using those video scripts, how can 
you frame that line? How can you provide a little bit of an intro that speaks and leans into that ideal client? If you're using the blog content, what's that call to action? These are all things that we help and assist with, but definitely if you are an independent content creator or you know you should be and you're not yet, one of the best and easiest places to get started is to identify who is your ideal patient, who's going to fire you up and get you jazzed each and every day when you come in and you see a schedule loaded with that or those people, who are they? How can you speak to their pain points or the performance benefits they can get out of the care that you deliver? Meet them in the middle there. That's a great way to teach and invite consistently. Jason, what are your thoughts? I completely agree with you, Jeff. And, and it, that, that concept goes both ways. Who are the people that fire you up? But you could also probably imagine and think about who are the people that get fired up by you? That, you know, we all have, I don't know how else to say it, but sort of an energetic signature. They've Heard it say that you attract your tribe with your vibe, that literally on a scientific quantum level, we put out energy. Everybody's got a sort of energetic signature and we all have favorites. We all have people we are attracted to versus in some cases repelled from. That is an energetic vibration. And when you start understanding humans from that level, then what Jeff is you know, alluding to here is no different than saying, you know, I can make sounds come out of my mouth and other, anybody can hear it who can hear, which isn't everybody, right? There's a lot of people that you, know, you can communicate with, but you'll be more effective communicating with people if you actually speak the same language as the person you're trying to connect with, both for your benefit and for theirs. And so, whether it's an enthusiasm towards a particular, as you said, hobby or a particular technique or a particular condition or a particular whatever it may be, when we work with people who have things in common with us, where common goals, common visions, common history, commonalities, that helps more people. It just makes it easier for them to understand who you are, what you're about, what you offer. And it makes you more attractive to those people because they get you, they understand you. And I guess for those that kind of say, well, no, I still don't believe it. I think I can help everyone. Let me, I guess, maybe position it this way. Which restaurant would you go to? The restaurant that has the philosophy, we can feed everybody. And instead of making any particular claim about a particular type of food or a particular type of audience, they go, no, 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 no. If you're hungry and you've got a mouth and a stomach, we serve food for all. That's that's one approach, right? That's often what it sounds like when we're like, we can help everyone. And it's true you can help everyone, but that doesn't mean that everyone wants your help. The other side of the equation is going back to restaurants is if you knew a place that served the best cheeseburger on the planet, then the assumption is if you don't love a cheeseburger, you're not going to come. But that's not always true. Number one, cheeseburger lovers know where they're going to go. OK, that's an easy yes. Okay, As opposed to cheeseburger lovers not going to probably be attracted to if you're hungry, we've got food. Come and get it because we serve all. But if you're back in the we serve the best cheeseburger on the planet, you will have a line down the block for cheeseburger lovers. And those cheeseburger lovers are probably bringing friends and family and other people who go, I don't need cheeseburgers, but what else you got? So there is a way and a method to the madness of, and I know it's sort of paradoxical. Well, if they've got a spine and they're breathing, yes, you can adjust them and you can help them. But that's not the question we're asking here. We're asking who are the people who are going to be most attractive to wanting to come to your practice to learn more to want your services and to want to stick around for your services, not just kick the tires because you seduced them with some deep discount that quite honestly, some of these deep discounts, I, I almost look at and go, how do you only have that few people coming in? There's just something nonsensical about it that even when you make it cheap, I'll even dare say when you make it free, you still don't have people rushing through the doors to come on in when there's no barriers whatsoever. So there's something to the idea of making sure that you're charging enough that people have a perceived value of what you are, what they're paying for. 
and that you're speaking a language your ideal audience will not only understand, but will like, appreciate, and want more of. So I know it's a tough one for some chiropractors to get around, they're like, no, 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 but I can help everyone. Yes, you can help everyone, but not everybody wants your help. So who are the people that most want to work with you and who are the people you most wanna work with? And when you can solve that equation, you're gonna be making their life and your life much easier. Thank you so much for watching this video on The Smart Chiropractor. To not miss a single thing that's clinically oriented, marketing oriented, or more, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel today.